welcome to hodgepodge australia today we're making this floating bubble giant cupcake for this cake you're going to need a chocolate shell which i have made with white chocolate that i've tinted blue you can see the link on how to make a chocolate shell above in the corner you need a giant cupcake that's been baked you need white buttercream you need some white buttercream and some blue buttercream in piping bags and you need some gelatin bubbles if you'd like to know how to make these gelatin bubbles you can see that link popping up in the corner as well these you need to make a couple of days in advance and a good way to rest your sticks I have found is with a metal colander. In the tutorial I show you using a styrofoam disc which still works as well but if you have a metal colander it really works very very well. Moving on to assembling our cake, take the base of your giant cupcake cake and cut that in half so that we can layer it with buttercream. So you're going to want two nice even layers. Then because the entire thing won't fit inside your chocolate shell on its own as they're both the same size, they've both been made using the same mold, you're just going to want to trim the edges off around your cake that you can see that I'm doing there and then just discard those edges. You will then take your base and pop it into your chocolate shell, give it a little bit of a squish down so that it's a nice firm fill. And then using a large piping tip, you can just spoon the layer of buttercream in if you'd like, but I like having it in a piping bag. This way you get a nice even layer of buttercream all the way out to the side. Then you can take your second layer of cake and pop that onto the top, giving it a little bit of a press down so that, that buttercream is nice and firm. And then repeat the process. So put another layer of buttercream on top. This is going to help secure our top layer when we put it on after we've decorated it with fondant. You will also need white fondant for this cake. So there's a little heads up that I forgot to include at the beginning of the video. You're going to want some white fondant. But there you have our lovely buttercream. So that's the base of your cake. Done. It was that easy. The chocolate shell's lovely, but if it's as, as humid as it is here in Brisbane, you're going to want to keep that in the fridge while you decorate your top. Talking about decorating our top, let's get our top and add a layer of buttercream as a crumb coat onto our cake. So just a very thin layer, it does not need to be thick at all, just add a bit of the white buttercream. So make sure you do when you make up your batch of buttercream, separate it and make half white, half blue or a quarter white and three quarters blue because you're going to want to cover the top of your cake in white buttercream because you're covering it with white fondant. Put that in the fridge to set, then pull it back out and using a, another open piping tip you can see I'm adding a swirl of buttercream all the way around just in a nice layer it does help to have your turntable here so that you can just keep your hand steady and you'll see that that swirl goes down like you do get that ice cream swirl sort of feeling because when you put your fondant over the top once this is set you're going to want to use that buttercream to define your lovely swirl on your giant cupcake so pop that back into the fridge for a good half an hour to set now it's lovely and hard We've had time to roll out our white fondant to a nice big shape so that it goes all the way over the top of our cupcake. We don't need to worry about pulling it or stretching it. We're just going to lay it straight over the top. We're going to use our fingers simply to push that fondant down in between our rolls of buttercream. And this is going to give that effect of the lovely swirly icing top that you expect to get on a cupcake, except we've made it out of fondant. So we need to recreate it. Just doing that, you can see I'm using the outside of my hand, not generally my fingers. I just find that it smooths out a, ni a lot nicer. Then grab yourself a knife and trim off around the base. Now don't cut right at the base. Make sure you leave a little bit so that you can tuck it in under the sides of your cake and that's going to finish off those edges quite nicely. So you'll get a lovely smooth finish and there you can see our swirl top. Now it's time to assemble our cake. So pull your base back out of the fridge, attach it to a cake board using a bit of buttercream or a chocolate and then place it onto the top so make sure you have a look at the base of your cake and decide which way you want the front to be and also the top of your cake and decide where you want the front to be and put those two together and also make sure that's facing where you want it to be on the cake board so that when you put it on the table you have that lovely presentation and that is our giant cupcake put together so that's our top and our bottom now attached. And you can see you do get that gap between the top and the bottom because of the buttercream, but that is very easy to fix. So do not panic. Just get yourself a rope of white fondant. And by doing that, you're just rolling it out with your hands into a nice long rope and twist it around the end. Then using a knife, just give it a little bit of a trim and smooth that together like it was one whole piece on your cake to start with. And the last thing that you need to do is decorate it with our lovely gelatin bubbles. So there you can see 
the cake is complete. You have that lovely rope on the bottom. You have your lovely swirls on the top. And now we just get to do the fun part of decorating. So melt a little bit of chocolate in a Ziploc bag. Use white chocolate because it's going to blend in better. You don't want to use dark chocolate. It'll stand out like a sore thumb or it'll stand out like dark chocolate. But grab a little bit of white chocolate, snip off the edge of your Ziploc bag and just place a little bit onto the bubbles once you've realized where you want to put them. Don't go haphazardly putting chocolate onto your bubbles because you may end up putting them around the wrong way on your cake and not facing front. So do keep remembering where the front of your cake is because with those gelatin bubbles, you are always going to have that hole at the back from where you've taken the balloon out after making them. So you're going to want that sort of area to be facing towards the back of the cake, if not onto the cake. Depending on the shape of the bubbles and how you're going to get them to sit, you may need to have some of those exposed backs and you want them facing the back. So keep adding your bubbles until you're happy with all the position. Make sure you put some around on the front of the cake board as well so that it looks like they're all floating down from top to bottom of the cake and that they're coming to rest on the cake board. And that is how you make a floating bubble giant cupcake cake. I think it's really pretty and the great thing about this is that you can do it in so many colors. It doesn't have to be blue. This would be a really beautiful baby shower cake in either pink or blue. Make sure you check out all our other giant cupcake videos. Hit subscribe to us here at HodgePodge Australia and we'll see you again real soon.